When we're working with CSS grid using the auto fit keyword, we can make these cool intrinsic grids that sort of adapt to their situation, but there's a problem with them. So say we do an auto fit like this, and then I come in and do a min max, and I can say really simple example here. I'm not gonna dive too deep into it, but I have one column, two columns, three columns, four, and it just sort of works. But if these run out of room, they're gonna start adapting. And I don't have to have any media queries for this. It's super cool, super nice. But what if I got into these ranges where I wanted a maximum of three or a maximum of four columns? Well, doing this, it doesn't allow us to do that. Luckily, there is an interesting little solution that we can do if you need that type of thing. And that's what we're gonna be exploring in this video. Hello, my friend and friends. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and I'm here to help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And let's continue with our example that we're looking at so we can see one way that you can be, you know, unlock a new possibility with Grid. And as we're getting started in this, I just want to say a really big thank you to Mark Boots on my Discord server, who's the one who came up with this idea and said I could share it. So a big thank you to Mark. And if you'd like to check out the Discord, it is linked down in the description below. And so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to change this grid to be a grid auto flow of column, which just means that everything's automatically going to make a new column. It looks similar to what we had before, but the difference is it's going to overflow. It's almost like a display flex at this point. Not quite, but uh, a little bit like that. Um, whereas, you know, this adapted to things a lot better. As I said, we want something where we're maxing out at say three or four columns as some simple examples or whatever you need, right? Now this does work, but I will say it's a little bit more hard coded in, and we're going to do it by using the, I have a grid item because inside all of these, we have my grid items. Right, and I'm gonna say grid item, and we're gonna say nth child, or it could be an nth of type. We're gonna say nth child, and on my nth child, we're going to say, let's just do a one, to select the first one. And for now, we're gonna change the background color. Background, and I have an accent color set up here. It's with a sass variable, but don't worry. You can see it's just changing the color there. Um, and the reason I wanna do that, or you know what, we're gonna do that as the border color, so it's a little bit less aggressive, and it should still, there we go. We can see it's highlighting the one that's coming in there. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that on just the first one is we're sort of gonna take the next step from here. So right now I'm saying my first one, but let's say I wanted to max out at four columns. What we could actually say here, instead of the first one, is every fourth one plus one. So four n plus one. And now let's see, and you know what, let's change this back to a background. Uh, background, because it's gonna highlight things a little bit better again. And now you'll see it's selecting the first one again, but now it's also selecting the fifth one. So it's one, and then we're skipping three, and then we get the next one. One, skipping three, getting the next one. We could also do this with every third plus one. It would always be the first one, and then every fourth one. And you might be going, Kevin, what's the point of this? Well, what we can do on this is we can actually say grid column, for these is one. And you'll notice now, don't look at the numbers because the numbers are a little mucked up, but what this is doing, let's turn off the background color, is I'm saying I want three columns maximum. So I have one, I have two, I have three. Now here it's happening to fall down to two and there's a reason for that, but you can see everything's sort of adapting and working. We have three columns and then we have our three columns down here. Now there is an issue with this that has come up and you might notice that I have uh, over here, we have a one, a two, a three, a five, and a four. And the order of things has sort of got a little bit jumbled, but we can fix that. It just does mean that we're taking things and we do have to be a little bit more explicit with how we're setting things up. And with these all in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say three and plus one. So that's our first and then every one, you know, our first, our fourth, and so on. Then this one will be plus two. So that'd be our second, our fifth, and so on. And this one will be a three plus three. And so that's gonna be our third plus our sixth and so on from there. And then we can make this a grid column two and then a grid column three. And if we do that, now you'll see we have one, we have two, we have three columns. And then the fourth one is always just going in the right order. And then from there, everything's gonna wrap and everything's gonna work. We could even take this and turn this into 10 items. Let's just take these three. We'll get up to nine. Uh, okay, we'll go up to 12, why not? It's going to work. And I'm not gonna change the numbers just so we can, don't have to speed things up, but you can see I've run out of colors because I didn't plan for that many. Um, but you can see that it's just working. And what we can do is this is for if I want three columns, but what if I want four columns? Well, then I just change this to a four, change this to a four, change this to a four, 
and then I would ideally come in and add another one here that would be my plus four and change that to a four. And now you can see we have one, but if there's only one, it stretches. If we have two, it fit, it works. We have three, it works, four it works, and then so on. And it just works magically from there. There's two more things I want to look at. One of them is how does this work with, you know, if we get too small, the old system, that first one I looked at was nice because we didn't need media queries. This one, if you do want to adapt it, would require media queries. So we'll look at that first and we'll look at more of like a quick fix, easy way to do this instead of having to manually do as much as we're doing here. Um, so let's actually take off all these accent colors because we don't need those. And what we can do is that's my grid container. So here the grid auto flow of column on there, I'm going to remove and everything's going to sort of look the same because of these column counts. But we'll come here and we'll say that uh, at media min width of say 50 M just so we have a number in there, we can have our grid container grid. And then we can just take all of these, throw them inside here. And now we'll get that same thing, whereas, but now at small screen sizes, everything stacks. And then at large screen sizes, you'd get your column or your grid set up, but with like a max column count, which is really cool. Now, one downside of this, this is where like you can think variables, wouldn't variables be the greatest thing in the world here? Uh, because if I could use a custom property to come in and change this and I could just update one value somewhere and it would just work everywhere. Sadly, we can't use custom properties here. It just doesn't work sadly, but it is what it is. But what we could do is we could abstract this away a little bit, but use good variable names and use SAS to actually make this a little bit more workable. And as long as I think you have good variable names, even though you can abstract things away with SAS, it can actually make things a little bit more readable. Because if I came across this, this would need a, a comment in the CSS to actually understand what's happening. So let's come through this and actually turn all of this off. And we can replace all of that by coming here and doing an at four I from zero through and for an uh, through through um, or from one through four. And we're going to change these numbers to make it less abstract, but I want to start here. And this is something you can do in SAS. You can do loops that generate CSS. And so here we can do our grid item and child. And we can then use the numbers. So I'm going to do my 4n plus, and then here we're going to use my i. Now the i, we can't actually put it in like this. We have to use something called interpolation here. So I'm going to do that and wrap it around, which just means it's actually going to work in my CSS basically. And then here I'm going to do a grid column of i. So what it's doing is it's going to loop through this one time. So it's saying 4i from 1 through 4. So the first time, is the I gets replaced by the number one. So we end up with a number one here and we end up with a number one here, which would be exactly what we see here. And then it's going to do the same thing again, but it's going to replace this with the number two and this with the number two. And it gives us exactly what we see here. And then it does it again and again. Now you can see here, I misspelled through. So that's why I'm getting an error because I thought I fixed that, but I got um, a thought instead of a through, but we can see it's actually working. And now, as I said, this is still actually very abstract, right? So for this, we could you could have like your global variables and you set something up that's with your global variable, the same max column count, or you could come and keep it close to your grid container. So right here, I could say max column count. And here we could actually say four. And then inside over here, we could come in and replace this four with a max column count. And because that four is also the same number that we need here, we would come in here and do the same thing of a max column count, which would also need interpolation. So I'll wrap that and put a uh, pound there. And now all you have to do is come and find this variable. So in uh, the one thing is you, I can't take it and actually nest it inside of here. Um, because we're in a media query there because of how SAS works with how all of this works basically. So it does need to be like a global variable that I'm using, but I could come and change this to a two. And now I have a maximum of two columns or I could change it to a three. And now I have three columns or I could change it to a five. And now I have five columns and it just works and it's going to stretch things, but we're having a max column count 
I think that's pretty cool. And if you'd like to know more cool tricks that you can do with SAS, I am working on a course right now. There is more information linked just below this video. And if you like this video and you'd like to see more tips and tricks and fun things you can do with CSS in general, then there is a short playlist for you right here. And with that, I wanna say thank you very much to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stewart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.